Right. Right. Grahamlet, uh, 4.0, MVP, 97.5% memorized, <clears throat> Act 5, Scene 1. No ear, no ear, in ear devices, no in ear devices here. No text on the screen. No text off screen. Nothing appear for me to be looking at. Is she to be buried in Christian burial? That willfully seeks her own salvation? I tell thee she is, and therefore make her grave straight. The crown of Saturn and finds a Christian burial. How can that be? Unless she drowned herself in her own defense. Why? It is found so. <clears throat> must be say off and endo. It cannot be else. But here lies the point. If I draw myself wittingly, it argues an act. And an act of three branches. It is to act, to do, and to perform. All go, she drawn herself wittingly. Nay, but here you, Goodman Delbert, give me leave. Here lies the water. Good. Here stands the man. Good. If the man go to this water and drown himself, it is willy-nilly, he goes. Mark you that. But if the water come to win and drown him, he drowns not himself. Or go, he that is not guilty of his own death shortens not his own life. <laughs> but is this law? High Mary is crown is quest law. We are the truth on. If this had not been a gentlewoman, she should have been buried out of Christian burial. Why that thou sayest? And the more pity that great folk should have countenance in this world to drown or hang themselves more than they are even Christian. Come, my spade. There's no ancient gentleman but gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. They hold a balance profession. Was he a gentleman? He was the first ever bore arms. Why, he had none. What? Are the heathen? How does one understand the scripture? The scripture says Adam digged. Could he dig without arms? <laughs> I'll put another question to thee. If thou answers me not of the purpose, confess thyself. Go to. What is he that built stronger than either the mason and ship out of the carpenter? <laughs> the gallows maker, for that frame outlives a thousand tenants. I like that work well. In good faith. The gallows does well. But how does it well? It does well to those that do ill. Now thou dost ill to be to be to say now thou dost ill to say that gallows is built stronger than the church. Arg all the gallows may do well to thee. To it again, come. Who builds stronger than a mason, a shipwright, or a carpenter? Hmm. Ah, uh, Mary, tell me that and then yoke. Mary, now I can tell. To it! And by the mass, I cannot tell. Cudgel thy brains no more about it. But your dull ass will not mend his pace with beating. And when your ass is questioned next, say, a grave maker. The asses he makes last till doomsday. Go, oh, get the yawn, fetch me stupid liquor. <laughs> In youth, when I did love, did love, oh, me thought it was very sweet to contract all the time for a maid of hoof. <laughs> no, me thought there was anything honeyed. Just found no feeling of his business that he sings at grave making? Custom hath made it him a property of easiness. Does he himself? I had a little employment of the daintiest sense. <clears throat> uh, 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 had the daintiest sense. But angel with his stealing steps hath clawed me in his clutch and hath shipped me into the land as if I had never been such. Uh, that's got a little tongue in it, you could sing once. How the name jowls it to the, the, jowls it to the ground as if it were Cain's job of it at the first murder. This might be the pain of a politician, which this ass now or officers. One that was so compared God, might it not? It might, my lord. What of a culture which could say, Good morrow, sweet lord. How dost thou, good lord? This might be, this might be, this might be my lord such a one, that praised my lord such a one's horse when he meant to beg it. Might it not? It might, my lord. Why, and so, and now, my lady worms. Chapless and knocked about the mass of the sexton spade. Here's a fine revolution, we the trick to see it. These bones cost no more the breeding but the play at loggers with them. I ain't ache to think on. Oh, pick 
axe and a spade a spade for a shrouding sheet. Oh, a bit of clay for to be made <laughs> for such a guest is meet. There's another. Why? Why not be? Why? Why not be the skull of a lawyer? Where well, are his quillities now? His quillities, his cases, his tenures, and his tricks. Why does he suffer this rude knave now to knock him about the sconce with a dirty shovel and on top of his acting of battery? Huh. Uh, this fellow might be in his time a great buyer of land with his statutes, his recognizances, his fines, his double vouchers, his recoveries. Is this the recover? Is this the fine of his fines and recovery of his recoveries? To have his fine paid full of fine dirt? Well, his vouchers vouch him no more of his purchases, and double ones too. And the length and breadth of a pair of indentures. The very conveyances of his lands will hardly lie in this box. It must he inherit himself up no more. I'll draw up more, my lord. It is not part of the sheepskins. Ah, uh, my lord, and of calfskins too. A sheep and calf, which he got a chance in that. I will speak to this fellow. <clears throat> oh, a bit of clay for to be made. For such, such a guest as me. Whose grave is this, sir? Mine, sir. Bit of grave to be made for such a guess, isn't it? I think it'd be dying indeed for that lion, sir. You, you lie out on it, sir, and therefore it is not yours. For my part, I do not lie in it, and yet tis mine. Thou dost lie in it, to be in say tis thine. It's for the dead, not for the quick. Tis a quick lie, sir. To it away again from me to you. What man dost thou take it for? For no man, sir. What woman, then? For none, neither. Who's to be buried in it? When there was a woman, sir, but rest of soul, she's dead. Absolute the neighbors. We must speak by the card. Our equivocation will undo us. By the law, Horatio, these three years I have taken note of it. The age has grown so picked that the toe of the peasant comes so near the heel of the culture, he goals his kind. How long has I been a grave maker? Of all the days in the year I came to it, that day that our last king, Hamlet, all came forth from us. How long is that since? Cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It was the very day that young Hamlet was born, he that was mad and sent him to England. I married. Why was he sent him to England? Why? Because he was mad. So we'll cover his wits there. Or if we do not there, it's no great matter. Why? To not be seen him there. There the men are as mad as he. How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. Faith. How strangely? Faith, even when losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here, in Denmark. I've been sexton, sexton here, man and boy, thirty years. How long will a man lie on the earth ere he rot? In faith, if he be not rotten before he die, as we have many parky corpses nowadays that will scarce hold the laying in, he will last you some eight year or nine years. A tanner will last you nine years. Why he more than another? Why, sir, his Hide is so tanned from his trade that it will keep out water a great while. And your water's a sword care of your horse and dead body. Here's a skull now that's laying you in the earth. Three and twenty years. Who do you think it was? Who do you think it is? Uh, nay, I know not. Uh, excuse me. Pestilence on for a mad rogue. I bought a flag and a wrench on my head once. Uh, oh, that horse and that fellow. Three and twenty years. Who do you think it was? No, no, not a horse and that fellow's it was. I bought a flag and a wrench on my. Excuse me. I bought a flag and a wrench on my head once. His same skull, sir, was, sir, York's skull. The king's jester. This, he and that. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. Fellow of infinite jest of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. Now how poor to my imagination it is. Oh, my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your gambles now, you where be your where be your where be your now your, wherever your jibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that will to the table on the roar. No one now to mock your own grinning, I'm quite chop fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber, and tell her that a paint an inch thick to this favour she must come. 
make a laugh at that. Pity Horatio, tell me one thing. That's all, my lord. Dost thou think Alexander looked at this fashion in the earth? E'en so. And smelt so? <laughs> E'en so, my lord. What base uses we may return, Horatio? Why? May not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till it find it stopping a bunghole? To her to consider too curiously to consider so. No, faith, not a jot. But to follow him thither with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it is thus. Alexander died, Alexander was buried, Alexander returneth into dust, the dust is earth, of earth we make loam. And why of that loam whereto he was converted might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall to expel the winter's floor. It's all soft to sight. Here comes the king, the queen, the courtiers. Who is, it they, who is this they follow? And with such maimed rights? This doth betoken the course they follow did with desperate hand foredo its own life. Twas of some estate. Couch we a while. Mark. What ceremony else? That is Laertes, a very noble youth. Mark. What ceremony else? For also Greece has been as far in arts as we have warrantized. Her death was doubtful. And with that great command also is the order, she shall run ground and sanctify the flowers to the last trumpet. For charitable prayers, shards, flints, and pebbles should be thrown on her. Yet here she has allowed her virgin crowns, her maiden strumments, and the bringing home of bell and burial. Must then no more be done? No more be done! We should profane the service of the dead to sing sage requiem, and such rest to hers, the peace parted souls. Lay her in the earth, and from her fair and unpolluted flesh may violets spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be when thou liest howling. What? Fair Ophelia. Sweets to the sweet farewell. I had hoped thy bride bed to have decked, sweet maid, and not to have strewed thy grave. Oh, treble woe. For ten times treble on that cursed head, whose wicked deed thy most ingenious sense deprived thee of. Hold off the earth a while, till I've caught her once more in mine arms. <laughs> now pile your dust upon the quick and dead. Tell of this flat, a mountain you have made, to all top old Pelion, or the skyish head of blue Olympus. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis, whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. The devil take thy soul. Thou prayest not well. I pretty take my fingers from my throat. For though I am not splendid and rash, yet have I any something dangerous which let me wiseness fear. Away with my hands. Dr. Bessander, Hamlet, Hamlet, my lord. Good my, my lord, be quiet. Huh? Gentlemen, good my lord, be quiet. Why, I will fight with him upon this theme until my eyelids no longer wag. Oh, my son, what theme? I love Ophelia. Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my son. What would thou do for her? Wound, show me what thou do. Oh, he is mad, Laertes. For love of God, forbear him. Zoom, so show me what thou do. Would weep, would fight, would fast, would tear thyself, would drink up eyes, or eat a crocodile? I'll do it. Dost thou come here to whine? To outface me with leaping in a grave? Be buried quick with her, and so will I. And if thou prate of mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us. Till our ground, singeing his paint against the burning zone, make us up like a wart. Nay, and thou mouth, I'll grant as well as thou. This is near madness. And thus a while the fit will work on him. A man as patient as the female dove, when that a golden cutlet's are disclosed, his silence will sit drooping. Hear you, sir. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever. But it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew, and dog will have his day. I pray you, good wish. I pray you, good wish, you'll wait upon him. Good Gertrude, such and watch over your son. Something like, uh, something in our patience in our last night's speech will put the matter to the present push. Good, good. Um, <clears throat> this grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet shortly shall we see. An hour of quiet 
thereby shall we see. And now of quiet shortly shall we see. Till then in patient. Let's <laughs> start again. Uh, dog will have his day. I pray you good Horatio, wait upon him. Oh my lord. Uh, strengthen your patience in our last nights. Strengthen your patience in our last nights. Strengthen your patience in our last night's speech. We'll put the matter to the present push. Good Gertrude, sit some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of quiet, shortly shall we see. Till then, in patience, our proceeding be.